this is Noreen from Joy of Cards and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to my YouTube channel. Yay! For more of my Stampin' Up! card videos, please click that subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified when my videos release. Also, I give away the demo card, so if you're a first time subscriber, put your email in the comments and I'll email you back and let you know if you won the card. Also, make sure you watch the video all the way through because you never know, I might give the card away to anyone or I might do, be doing card kits or swaps or something. So anyway, now let's go make a card. Hello, today's video is a graduation card, but this one's really cool because it's a money one. And I'm gonna show you how to make a money like pad. So these are all connected here and your graduate can sit there and pull off money one by one by one by one. There's 25 ones here because I'm actually making this for um, some girls that are graduating. So let's go ahead and start. So the only stamp set we're gonna be using today is Peaceful Moments and it's the congratulations right here. And then I'm also using the swirly thing from Stitched Stars. And then from Scallop Contours, I'm gonna be using the third smallest sentiment tag here. These are great. These are brand new in the catalog. I've been using them like crazy. Uh, also, if you go to the body of my video, there's a, a little link. You can click on that and go right to my Stampin' Up! site and place an order. So I always recommend that. <laughs> and then also from Playful Alphabet, that's how I put the class of 2021. These were great. I unfortunately also have a graduate from 2021. And I tell you what, it's sad because she lost a lot of her junior year and she lost all of her senior year. They were all online. And then my husband and I decided to graduate her in December because there was just no reason for her to go back. She could graduate and she all already got into college, but it was really sad. She didn't get a prom, she didn't get anything. So it's really sad. So one of these is gonna go from to her, but you know, have more money in it. So that's the dies and stamps. The DS paper we're using, it's killer awesome. And it's simply elegant. And it comes in all these little um, uh, foil and non-foil sheets, and they're just really, really beautiful. I'm also using copper and gold foil to accent it because there is copper and gold in the DS paper here. So now let's put the card together. So the first thing we need to do is make the money pad here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab whatever configuration of money you wanna do. Now I did singles because um, I'm giving away actually a bunch of these. My daughter was a volleyball player on top of it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so uh, there's a lot of volleyball girls on her team that are graduating. So I just put like 25 $1 bills because there's just too many of them. Anyway, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your denomination of bills and then you're gonna go through them. Now, when I went to the bank, I was feeling the pressure of the line and I forgot to ask for new bills. The best thing to do, because it'll be prettier with new bills, but if you mess up like I did, what you need to do is go through your bills and make sure that you get all the little creases out of them. And if any of them are folded, uh, you wanna make sure that they're unfolded. Here's one right here, because it's important that we get the edge of every bill. So go through your stack and make sure that they're all good and not folded here. So I see another one right here. Here's another perfect example. So make sure that's all unfolded like so. So I'm gonna go through the rest of my stack and I'll be right back. Once you've made sure all those little folds are done, you're gonna take your bills and you're gonna make sure that they're all lined up. So you're gonna grab a full edge. Another reason why you should get new bills is because um, they'll be nice and crisp and you won't have to worry about all the uh, folding stuff and getting them lined up. So once you have them lined up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a couple of pieces of some light cardboard. And guess what? We have the best light, uh, light cardboard. It's the back of your DS paper. So this was Playful Pets, which is retired. And by the way, I've got some retired products here if you're interested, if there's something that you're looking for, let me know, uh, cause I do sell my retireds. So you take a piece of the backs of these DS papers and you're gonna cut this two and five eighths by six. So you're gonna grab the better one that you cut, like this is a nicer one. And you can use this on your Stampin' Up! cutter too. So it, you don't need a big uh, cutter when you're cutting it because this cardboard is pretty light. 
Anyway, so you line this up to the very edge of your bills, and then you're going to take a top one and you're going to line it up like that. Now you're going to take some binder clips and you're going to clip it all the way around. Oh, I bet you can just do the top, but I went ahead and I just wanted to make sure, so I put a few of them here. And don't fold over the, um, the little handles here. We, we're going to use that in a second. And then you're going to go online. You're going to go on Amazon and get this padding compound. Also, if you go in the body of my um, video, I'll put the link to this on Amazon because this is great. It's padding compound, white, two ounces. It'll last you a billion years. So uh, it's like a one-time purchase kind of thing. And then grab a really crummy like kindergarten <laughs> uh, paintbrush. It doesn't have to be a you know, a really nice Michaels, whatever, $10 brush. And, and there's no reason to shake this. I know I just shook this, but I don't think there's a reason to shake it because it doesn't really move. And dip your brush in here and you're going to just paint the top. And when this dries, it turns into that sticky glue that is on, you know, um, a regular pad of paper. So we're going to paint this all like so and really try to get in there just in case you got a bill that's going catawonky. Like if you, you mistakenly didn't ask them for new bills like I did and just cover it real good. And we're gonna put a second coat on this too in a few minutes. So I'm gonna do this. Usually I'll do this and then I'll walk away for a couple hours. And if you do, wash your brush. You don't want to be fighting it. Okay. And then the reason why we left these little clips up is when you put it down, it's not going to touch anything. So we painted that and we're going to put this on the side and continue our card. So this is obviously a slimline card. So what we're going to do is take a nine by eight uh, basic black and score it at four and give it a nice fold on it. Especially this card because it does depending on how much money you've got in there, it will kind of bounce a little bit. So score it really nice. And then you're going to take a piece of that Simply Elegant and you're going to cut this 8.75 by 3.75 and go ahead and just nail it up and put it inside the card. We're going to do the inside of the card first because the hat on the front is kind of bulky. So whenever you've got a bulky card like that, do the inside first and it'll just make life easier. So that's really simple like that. And then you're gonna take a piece of copper foil. Like I said, there's copper in this DS paper and there's gold. So we're gonna alternate those. So this is also 875 by 375 and go ahead and snail it up and put it on the other side like so. There we go. And then you're gonna take a piece of gold foil and the gold foil is going to be three and a quarter by eight. So go ahead and snail this one up and put it in the middle like so. Then you're going to grab that uh, scallop contours die and it's the third die. And I went ahead and I cut this in shimmery white. Cause I thought, you know, it's a graduation card. It should look kind of pretty. And before we snail it up and put it on the card, cause just in case you, you mess it up, we're gonna go ahead and take some memento and take that congratulations from Peaceful Moments is right here and stamp that's really good. And then put it toward the top so you have a place to write your um, whatever you want to write in your card and just like that then go ahead and snail it up and I'm using my little silicone craft sheet and this kind of keeps my my uh, board here nice and clean that'll also be in a link in the uh, body of my video so this is essential if you just like scrapbook or anything this keeps all the glue the, uh, the tape you can do mirroring effects on these things. These, these things are awesome. You can mix colors. They're, they're fantastic. And now we're going to take the little swirlies and here they are and they're from Stitch Star. So make two of those in the copper foil. Let me tell you something about 
foil. The thing about foil is you want to cut the piece to the size of the foil itself because every time you run it through a die cutting machine, it'll scratch it. So cut it down to the piece that you want and then, uh, and then run it through. Don't run through a whole big piece and you know, you got to allow all the space because most of the time your cutting plates are pretty scratched. Even if it's brand new, I mean, only if it's brand new would I ever run it a full piece through, but I, I don't even know if I'm comfortable with that either. And then I'm putting these kind of opposite. So this swirlies down here on this side is up on top, it's just, just how I had it. And then just put these in the middle right here. Now let's put on a second coat to the money. So I did two coats. I don't know if you need two coats, but I did two coats. I figured, well, if I missed a spot, then I'll get it this time. And I've made lots of little um, examples before I used it on money, in fact. Now we're gonna take a piece of gold foil and I cut this eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I'm just gonna put it in the middle here. Now, I could have cut this down because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these on top, but this is actually a really good way to make sure you're centered and everything is just kind of waste a little bit of gold foil. And then I took the DS paper and this is eight and three fourths by an inch. And I'm gonna line this up with the top. And then I'm gonna take another one, eight and three quarters by one inch, and then I'm gonna line it up with the bottom here, like so. And then you're gonna take a piece of basic black and you're gonna cut this eight and three quarters by one eighth inch. And go ahead and snail that up. And when you snail something that's on the front, make sure all the little webbing is off because uh, it'll snag up on your envelope. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on top of the DS, right on the edge here. And it gives a little, little trim. It makes it look a little more finished than if I would have uh, just left it. So I'm gonna do that to the other side, the same dimensions, that one eighth of an inch by eight and three quarters. Make sure all the webbing is off. And I know a lot of people like using glue. I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I only glue when I have to glue. I just find it messy. And this nail comes up pretty easy. And I use um, this stuff from the big box store. So anyway, so that's that part. Now we're gonna make the graduation hat and we're gonna do a square and this square is 1.75 by 1.75 and this is 1.5 by 1.5. And we're gonna take these and we're gonna grab some dimensionals and I would recommend getting the black dimensionals because this is a black piece of paper so you wanna make sure. Now it's going to fit like so. So this is gonna be like this, this is gonna be turned, the hat is just gonna go a little off the edge here. So I'm gonna dimension up this part here. I, they also sell these in the little mini dimensionals in the pack. So you get big ones and little ones. And this bit.ly link is in my uh, video as well, my details. So I'm gonna dimensional that and I'm gonna put it right there like so. Now the little button part of the hat, I'm gonna take a piece of scrap foil. I save every little piece of scrap foil I can because I'm constantly cutting it down because you wanna you know, run it through to cut because anything you run through there, if it's not protected, it'll scratch. But how I made that is I just used my uh, detailed trio and there's a little, little button right there and I'm just gonna stick this all the way through and you can tell if it's in because you can look on the other side and it's covered. And then this one, just you just go right in the middle and punch it and it'll make that little piece right there. Now for the tassel. Now, <clears throat> what I did is, here's that Simply Elegant trim. It comes in a two pack. And whenever I use it, I make sure that I use a little glue dot and hold it down because if you don't, this whole thing unravels and it makes a big mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just clip off the little glue dot from before. And then I'm going to take this and I'm gonna see how uh, many times I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers. Now take three fingers and wrap this around one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna do six times. 
and then I'm going to cut this off. Okay, then unwrap it and we're gonna do something different. So this is actually pretty thick and if you don't do what I'm just gonna show you, it's going to be way too thick. So this is the same amount of wrapping around my fingers and I, I think I even use four fingers for this and it's really, really thick. But what you're gonna do is you're going to fray the end here. So pull out the pieces and this might take a second, but fray it and you'll notice inside there's this white thread. Pull that out because you don't need any more thickness in your trim here. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pull all of it out. So see, I got the whole big piece, not a problem. You're also gonna need a piece to tie around the middle. So go ahead and do the same thing thing here and just pull out that white thread and then you're going to need another piece and I'm just I'm wasting a bit because I'm not really sure how long it's going to be so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to take it fray that end and take out that white thread so I'm just pulling it pulling it and here's that white thread on this. So all the white threads are out. So I got two pieces to tie and I've got my uh, piece here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna grab this end and pinch it real good. Grab this end and pinch it real good. Now the tricky part is to tie this in the middle, which is like, I'm gonna use, I literally just use my teeth. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it two little knots here and okay all right and then you're gonna take those two ends with the knots you're gonna hold them real good make sure that's in the middle and tied real tight and then we're going to hold on to those two pieces that you just tied and pull this the loops onto itself Okay, and just kind of push it down like so. Don't worry about these hanging off ones, they're fine. Okay, so we're pulled down really good like that. So this is the knot you just tied. Here's the rest of it. Hold that really tight and take the other piece. And this knot you're gonna make at the very top. So I'm gonna try to even that out. Pull it over. I might use my teeth again, yes. <laughs> yep. I'm going to tie it with my teeth. I'm going to haul it tighter with my teeth. And I'm going to pull that real tight. And I'm going to make another knot. This I don't have to use, but my teeth. And tie that really, really tight. Make sure it's right at the top. Okay. And then we're gonna take this end with all the fraying. I'm going to cut the loops first and just cut them up. And then we're gonna cut these off. And looky, looky, now I'm gonna cut these two ends off for the, the last knot we just did, okay? And you want this, and that's how you make the little tassel. And it's not, because we pulled the thread out, look the size difference. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So that's how you do the knot. Now we gotta put the uh, pieces onto the hat here and take a glue dot, like the smallest one you can get because this little doohickey that we cut out with the punch, which by the way is in uh, copper foil, is kind of small. So I'm gonna take that glue dot because I don't even know what size this is, but not small enough. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna make it kind of small my fingers here and put it where I want on the hat, like so. And then I'm gonna take the string and I'm gonna kind of line it up with like the card that I did here and see how much I wanna cut off here because I do wanna cut some off. So if you're gonna cut off the end, 
make sure they're perfectly even so you don't have to um, so you can hit the glue dot at the same spot and then I'm gonna put that on there like so so I'm gonna turn it over because I can see my little knot okay like so and then I'm gonna take this copper piece turn it over grab a glue dot this by the way is a take your pick tool and it's pretty awesome so I really like it it's also if you uh, in the body of my video if you want to click on the bitly link It'll go right to my Stampin' Up site and you can place an order. Um, try to use my host code. That will also be in the video notes as well. And then I'm gonna put uh, that glue dot on top of the little punched out piece. And I'm gonna put it right in the middle. And then you just kinda have to tuck and hide, tuck and hide, tuck and hide. And there's your hat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get those black dimensionals again and we're going to put them on the back. Now the dimensionals are on the back. I did use my mini black dimensionals on the end and you get both the minis and the big ones in the pack. So now what I did is I just put one level here. Now I'm going to put another level of dimensionals on top of the piece on top here because this piece has a dimensional and there's dimensionals under here. So I want the thing to be level. So all the pieces on the big part of the hat, I'm going to put two dimensionals here. So you notice what I'm doing. I know it's hard to see black on black there in the video, but I'm putting two just on that piece. I've got all my dimensionals on there, doubled up on this piece, and then I'm gonna put this right in the middle. And what I wanted to do is I wanna see that gold underneath the bottom here. So it looks just a little better I had it the other way at one point and I went, no, I think I need to move that up. So you do want to see the little gold here because it looks nice. So that's the hat. Now you're going to go ahead and grab your playful alphabet and you're going to cut out class of 2021 in copper foil. And like I said, I used all my scrap. I cut it to fit. So see, I used there. So um, go ahead and cut those out. And once you've cut those out, before you glue them down, kind of line them up and see where you want it. So just kind of put this here, because then you'll know your spacing. And when you start snailing these on, because I'm going to snail them, because it is foil, and glue on foil is a little odd. Um, usually I do use the glue when I'm doing something small, even though I like snail better. Um, and just kind of do that. And then when you, like I said, when you are snailing these on, start with the two outer numbers and work in. It's better that way. So put that there and put that there. So for example, let's do the one here and I'm gonna put this right here and I'm gonna get that two and the other thing about snails, I can move this around without it leaving too much residue behind if I have to move it. If I had glue, it would be a little di more difficult. And I'm gonna do the zero. If I need to adjust here, I can. And then the two here, just like so. And then I'm gonna do this side and I'll be right back. When you're snailing these uh, letters and numbers, sometimes a little piece of uh, plastic comes off the back. That's okay. Just pull it off and then keep snailing. Now that the card's done, I mean, if you're not gonna do the money, you could just put a gift card here. That'd be the same thing. So now we're gonna do the unveiling of the pad. Now it should work just like a notepad like this. And let's take off the binder clips. And it should be should be uh, dry by now. It dries pretty quick. And then you're gonna take off the top one. Make sure you're not taking off the bottom one because you don't want them to look, you know, open it to that. You want it to open to this. So, and then you're only gonna take off the top one, leave the bottom one. So I'm just gonna pull that off and look, it's a paper pad. And then we're gonna take some good tear tape. This is also in the bit.ly link in the notes of my video. And I'll go right to my Stampin' Up site 
and use my May House code, which is in there. I usually have it right here, but I did not put that on. I'll probably flash it on the video here, so you can probably see it now. And then I'm going to take three pieces of that tear tape. Oh, I'll take four. And because this will hold down really nice. You don't want to use snail on it. won't be, uh, won't be um, good enough. That you ripped off all the little papers on there, turn it over, and just put it in the middle. And that's the card. Now, I am giving away a demo card, but it will not have money in it. <laughs> you do that yourself. So if I'm only giving away one, because I do have to make like, oh, five of these. So anyway, if you want a card, go ahead and put in the comments of my video, great card or whatever, and then uh, put your email, because I can't talk to you unless I have your email address. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can put, you could just email me direct, Noreen at joyofcards.com. And this is only for a first time subscriber. So still put a uh, comment in the video saying great card and I'll know if there's a new subscriber coming up. And then email me and I'll let you know if you won the card, but I'm only giving away one and no money, <laughs> but that'll do it for me. Thanks. Bye.